Hello and welcome to the Rebel Master Series. My name is Daniel Ibanez and it is my honor today to share with you a little bit about the tools, the techniques, the processes, the cultural kind of context of the artist Lion Decker. He's a golden age illustrator from the United States and he has inspired so much of what we see today, a hundred years later, not just in the United States, but across the world. In this series, we'll have a number of videos that cover an array of topics. The first is going to be just a master study where we familiarize ourselves with the artists and their tools. Second, we're going to take a kind of a mundane object and see if we can transfer those techniques, those concepts, to painting a unique subject. The third thing we're going to do is do something a bit more sophisticated to see if we truly got it. And the fourth is probably the most interesting is where we're going to take everything that we've learned along the way. And then we're going to apply all of those lessons and all of those techniques to doing something that truly infuses our own work. So this video series is going to be a lot of fun. It's really a lot about learning and learning to me is incredibly fun. So let's get to it. Let's get started with line and shape. These simple building blocks of art are crucial for almost any style. And they're very important for the Art Deco art persuasion of Landecker. Um, you can see that the silhouettes or the profiles of the figures are really important. And you can see that the figures both within the contour um, and in the contour itself are just very attractive. There's a lot of design sensibility that goes into the way that he does his line work. And here you can see I'm just using the transform tool, a convenient tool to quickly move my drawing because I'm in sketch mode here. This is me any, anytime I'm learning anything or, or doing any kind of sketchbook work, which is what I would consider this. Anytime I'm saying, well, you know, I have this inquiry, I have this, this wondering. And that's how I start. If you were to look at kind of like uh, that, art, the, art, the artistic process itself, um, starting with inquiry is very, very important. And as an artist, starting with the inquiry of like, what do these shapes and lines look like? That's crucial um, and kind of designing accordingly. But once we get past that point, we get into the blocking. So here we are blocking local color, local color, meaning just like if you could drop in uh, like a, a color picker into the general area, what would be the average tone, temperature, you know, the value of the area. And that's kind of what we're recording here is the reddish auburn tones for the hair, the uh, tan beige cream colors for the skin, that pinky white color for the background. That's just all we're doing is we're just kind of creating a, a almost like a tile mosaic of the image. And this is a really strong commonality between the work of Landecker and the traditional artists like uh, John Singer Sargent. While their brushwork is different and their approach is different, oftentimes Sargent is working um, out in landscapes amidst, you know, the Alps or, or uh, in Venice, you know, in the canals or whatever. Uh, Landecker is probably sitting, you know, in a studio with one model with direct spotlight. And you can see that with the kind of light quality that's there and the way that he's interpreting it. But in either case, there's a kind of common approach. Um, both of these artists, uh, the singer Sargent uh, master series was the one I did last time. So um, I thought I felt like as many artists, I've, I've got like six different master series going at the same time. But um, I felt like I wanted to push forward on this one because I felt like it was a really strong continuation of the John Singer Sargent work. And that is in large part due to this is that it doesn't matter how we're doing the work where whether you know um whether we're going for more of like an illustrative style or a fine art style the key is is that they work the same that the um, beginning phases where your your line work and your color blocking they're very very similar um and it's just the treatment of that and the brushwork that we use that sort of differentiates it here the stylization of the figures is much stronger um in modern times, we have, uh, you know, maybe the younger audiences have an interest in the semi-realism of, of those that kind of grew up watching anime and reading manga. And so there's a realism to their figures in some, some artists, but it's a stylized realism. 
and uh, maybe a little bit larger eyes, maybe a little bit more rounded head or whatever the, the particular artist is doing. And that's what we see here also. Um, and we don't have to get too much into that. Um, that stylization will come later, but for now we're just looking at blocking the value, blocking the color, getting the color temperature, finding the rhythms and making it kind of fit, you know, getting that, that mosaic of stained glass to sort of fit. Once we get enough of that done, then I feel emboldened to play a little bit with the style because that's the whole reason we're doing this. It's fun to kind of jump in and explore what makes this work work. Um, and I think it's, it's obvious, right? Like if, if I'm to say, you know, to even a super novice artist to say, well, what are the differentiating characteristics for uh, JC Landecker? Well, they'd say, there's strong linear elements that uh, flank the figures. Sometimes those, you know, sepia toned or burnt sienna toned uh, line elements will enter into the figure, but a lot of times they just kind of de define the outer contour. Um, there's also kind of a spotlight kind of light quality that um, activates and very kind of planar or angular marks that, that show up on the nose, the lips, the cheek, the chin, that kind of thing. And you'll also see um, a kind of a, a topping mark, like a finishing mark. Like you can see, you might have the, the lips and the cheeks and all that kind of drawn or painted kind of realistically, naturalistically, but then going back on top of that with, <clears throat> excuse me, with some more planar mark making. So like direct, unblended, very kind of angular dynamic mark making and that is especially true in the backgrounds because oftentimes like if you look across the body of the artist's work you know sometimes they approach things one way or another but very often the backgrounds are handled in a, a kind of a monochromatic but with strong brushwork sort of that's the solution for the background right it's just like makes one big pile of whitish cream paint and then go after it with a flat brush just to create this kind of like almost like shovel mark kind of the the mark seems to you can tell if this was like a real brush that it would have been a fairly stiff brush that it, it looks like the paint is kind of smashed out to the edges of the stroke um, and so <clears throat> we can replicate that with some of the built-in brushes in Rebel and that's really really cool um, as we kind of get into this Next phase, we're obviously doing some refinement of the shape and refinement of the form. And I would recommend to you, if you're doing this paint along with me or you're finding your own image to paint along with, that you paint it as kind of like smooth gradients, kind of building up the value structure from dark to light. And then um, kind of leave that as it is. Paint it as if you're just painting a normal semi-stylized portrait, right? where there's a little bit more attention on the linear elements and on the design sensibility of the facial features. Um, you can see that kind of distinctive uh, bridge of the nose, that distinctive uh, slant to the eyes, the distinctive kind of, um, uh, I don't know, almost like cushion at the edge of the, of the lips. And so there are some distinctive features and then you can see in the hair, the hair is very like dynamic and has a lot of angularity to it. So among all of these different elements, you know, you can kind of grab onto whatever you feel like is important, but I think they all work together really well. So the synthesis of all of these elements coming together is a very attractive design. So you can see why there's some gravity around his work, uh, even for all these years. Um, I think one thing you got to really enjoy when you're painting in this style is allow your design sensibilities to really come to life within the hair. Uh, I think it's more important than doing like an accurate master study uh, once you kind of get the gist of it to do your own design work for the hair. You know, hair is such a, it's so mutable, it's always changing. So. Uh, don't worry about getting it quote unquote right, uh, but more more than that, have fun with the design, you know. Um, and then if you're trying to design like this artist, what you're trying to do is is make sure that the design has a lot of angles and a lot of um, 
of interaction of those triangles and angles um, in that you get some dynamic lines that come off the mass of the hair so that instead of drawing you know the little strands or wispy hairs what you're doing is you're designing them like um, action lines for a comic book and you can see that kind of um, real energy at the edges of those marks as they kind of fade off into the background. So at this point in the drawing we're starting to get a sense of the original artist's work. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing these studies it's something I'll do very much at the end of the day and or even very late into the night and so they're not like fast or efficient or or very thoughtful. I just sort of turn my brain off and let it happen. I think, especially with this kind of work, which is very illustrative, it's it's not a mystery as to um, like what are the elements that you're trying to kind of recreate. It's not, it's not it's not mysterious. It's just a matter of getting the balance right. You know, as if it's like a recipe. Um, you know, and I can say now, looking back at this drawing as I'm kind of rewatching myself draw it. Um, I, I can see the mistakes and I can see the things I would do differently. But um, again, I, I know that kind of jumping into a project like this, it's going to be a bit of a journey, you know, and so I have to allow for myself to have just some playtime in the beginning where I'm not really worried about outcomes. I'm not really worried about it being perfect. I just want to, I just want to paint, you know, I just want to sort of absorb into it. As you can see, um, as we wrap up this first attempt, uh, we can see that there's this interesting juxtaposition between curvilinear elements and strong angular linear elements. And I think when you kind of assess the interaction of those, it's really a matter of your sensibility. But I think that there is you know, a huge body of work you can look at to get cues and tips on how the master artist does it. But what I think is, it's almost as if he's created a schema, like, um, it, again, like how in anime, how there's like a schema for how you do mouths, how you do eyes, how you do whatever. And there are different styles within that schema, but um, I think he has created a very kind of like a method for how you would handle these objects, right? Or these features. And so knowing that, just kind of embrace what, what you see and have fun with it. And there ends our first attempt at handling a Lion Decker portrait. And on to the next one.